What up, brothers and sisters, and welcome to MTG Malone with me, Matches Malone. And before we get started today, I have a little gift of for you, uh, those of you who don't know already. With the code Delightful Meadow, you can get one of these beautiful Bob Ross planes. Just put it um, in the uh, code bar in the store. You go to the store, it will be there. You can't miss it. You put in Delightful Meadow, you will get these beautiful planes. There will be a basic land type for each and every one of those coming up the next days. So you can get them all. A beautiful Bob Ross land. Yes, for free. Very freaking cool. So, yeah, but let's get to the game. If you're new to the channel or uh, you're just a regular, didn't subscribe already, now's your chance. Trying to reach this new milestone of two freaking hundred. Yes, 200. Can we do it? Who knows, but I think we can. And as soon as we'll get there, people have been asking me for a Discord server. I have been thinking about it and uh, I think that uh, as soon as we hit the 200, there will be a MTG Malone Discord server. So all of you beautiful people can get together, talk about everything you love about magic, make new friends, make new enemies who knows maybe your arch enemy will be there and you will be playing harder than ever before but i sure don't hope so because all of you are such nice people commenting down below sending me messages on twitter on reddit it's been such a joy doing this for a month now and i love each and every day of it but let's get into the deck today's deck is furious ashaya oh yes the fury of those two put together mm -mm. It is so nice. So, Ashaya. Why isn't everybody who plays Landfall playing this? Ashaya, Soul of the Wild. Power and toughness are both equal to the number of lands you control. So if this is on the field, you would think, okay, it's a 5-5. Costs 5, so it's a 5-5. Nope, you are wrong. If this is on the field, it is a 6-6, because non-token creatures you control count as lands, as forest lands, in addition to their other types. So you can tap them for mana, you can do whatever you want with them. But the most important part is that um, if a creature enters a little battlefield, a land enters the battlefield. So this Ashaya will be even stronger. But we use it together with Morag. So if you have seen my last, uh, last Morag deck, Morag Burn Surprise, link will be uh, up here somewhere, YouTube will show it to you. The Morag Surprise deck, very, very cool. Each creature gets plus one plus O for each time it attacked this turn. And if a land enters the battlefield under your control, you get an additional combat phase. Hmm. So you can attack in two times when Morag is out. And we absolutely want to do this. So imagine you have the Ashaya out, you attacked in with your creatures, then you play the Morag, he is a land. He will trigger himself and you will attack in an additional time. All your creatures will get plus two plus O. Oh, it is amazing. In the core, this is a Gruul deck. So there are some creatures that you would expect from a Gruul deck, like the Mammoth here. Very good. It's a land, but it is also a creature if you want to. And if you play it as a creature, every time a land enters the battlefield under your control, you get plus two plus two until end of turn. Same here with the Brushfire Elemental, also is a hasty boy, so that is very nice. And it gets plus two plus two until end of turn for each land entering the battlefield under your control. And creatures with power two or less can't even block it. So in the early game, this is pretty nice. Then we have the Fervent Champion because he is also a hasty boy with first strike. And uh, yeah, that's pretty good because if you have the Morocco out, he can attack in immediately. And that is what we want to do, attack in as much as possible. Also, we have the Bone Crusher Giant in here. It's a big boy, deals two damage to any target, and then you have a big boy, which is good. We have the Scavenging Ooze against those pesky rogue decks. Those are annoying as hell, and you can just exile your own creatures from your graveyard, have less than eight cards in your deck, uh, in your graveyard, 
And uh, if you exile a creature with it, you get a plus one plus one counter. But it also works very good with those cling to dusts. It is just amazing, the scavenging ooze. Just make sure that um, if you play it, maybe you have a green open so it doesn't die to a stomp immediately. Then, a card that makes this deck so freaking amazing is the Scoot Swarm. Because if you have the Ashaya out and you play the Scoot Swarm, it triggers itself. Then you play another creature. Just remember that the Ashaya says non-token creatures. So, if you have six or more lands, this will make a copy of itself. Otherwise, you get a small little insect. It's also cool. The insect can block. It is okay. Otherwise, if you have six or more lands, it will make a copy of itself. So if you have three lands out, and the Ashaya or whatever, five lands and the Ashaya, and you play the Scoot Swarm, it counts as a sixth land. It will trigger itself. You will have two Scoot Swarms out. Then you play whatever creature because you have the Ashaya out and it will get crazy. Trust me. And once you have some Scoot Swarms out and you have the Moroc out, those bad boys get in for two and then for three. So imagine you have five Scoot Swarms, they attack in, that's 10 damage with the Moroc. Then you play another creature or another land because you have the Ashaya out, triggers itself. Those will be three ones, you get in for 15 damage if the opponent doesn't block. So you want to use the Moroc a little bit as a surprise. Imagine you have the Scoot Swarms out with the Ashaya, you attack in, he won't block because he says, oh man, that's five damage. But then you get in with the Maroc, you untap those bad boys. It is just crazy. It is just crazy. And you will have a lot of mana because if you decide to tap your creatures because they are forests for land and then you play the Maroc, they all untap. They all untap again and you can do it over and over and over again. So also we have some cultivates in here. To get more lands into our hand because we need a lot of lands. We have the Shutter Skull Smashing, can remove creatures from the board, also works against Planeswalkers, which is pretty nice. So you can choose up to two targets with the X, and if X is six or more, which will be possible if you have your Shia out sooner than you think, you can remove those creatures. And if you don't have the Shutter Skull Smashing, you have your Primal Might. Get in there, destroy a creature for your creature gets plus x plus x, it fights another creature, you can get rid of it, pretty good. With the Moroc or the Ushaya out, you will have some really big boys out there. So, also we have the Great Hench, works really really good with the Ushaya. If the Ushaya is out and it's a 12-12 or whatever, this will cost 2 green. And you will always have 2 green with the Ushaya out, because yeah. Let's be honest, all of your creatures are lands and you can tap them because you will get your Moroc out and they will untap. Oh, this works so nice. This works like a charm. Then, uh, yeah, we have some lands, six mountains, eight forests, four pathways. Get those lands. If you have wild cards, get those lands. And for Fable Passage, because of all the landfall triggers, this is very nice. We have no Amber Cleave in here because we don't need it. We overrun them with Scoot Swarms and our Maroc. So that is all we need. But yeah, this is Furious Ashaya. This deck is fun as hell. I think I will be able to beat some people with it and they won't be happy. They won't be expecting the Maroc. So see you all in the games. All right, it's the beginning of a new season. Do we have the surprise deck? So, I just came out fresh out of the shower. One bad hair day is enough. Beard looking good. Oh yeah, I like that. So we go first and we have everything that we could hope for. Yep, this hand looks nice. This hand looks freaking nice. Those sleeves are freaking beautiful. Okay, he takes the mulligan here. And yeah, if you're not using the MTG assistant that you can see up here, it is a very, very nice. So we get in with Fervent Champion. No need uh, to let him think that we aren't anything else but aggro red. And he's aggro red himself, it seems. 
So, here's a surprise. Brush fire elemental on the field. He doesn't have a shock. And if he has it, well, it's okay. We have our scavenging ooze. Yep, there is the bone crusher giant. Just as predicted. So, here's a cultivate. Here is the cultivate. Yeah, I think I will play it as soon as possible. So we get to our Morog as soon as possible. So we have two red. We'll take another forest. So we can trigger the, scoot, uh, the scavenging ooze very soon. And the scoot swarm, also very nice. Forgot to talk about that in the deck tag. So, we get our scavenging ooze out here. And the forest, and next turn uh, we will have our... Um, scoot swarm out. Make a lot of scoot swarms. So, this looks very good. We could use one more land. But that is not a problem. Here's the Torbran. We will have a lot of blockers out soon. <clears throat> so I will block this with the Fervent Champion and make my Scavenging Ooze even bigger here. Yep, eating my own graveyard. Make this bad boy bigger. I like that. And here's a Primal Might. But I think having more blockers out here is not the worst. We'll get out another red. We have enough green. Alright. So we can still take care of the Torbran here. We give it 2-2. Smack down the Torbran. Get in for 6. So the Bone Crusher Giant. Yep. Here we go. So if we can draw another land here, that would be freaking nice. And if we can't, it still looks pretty okay. The Fireblade Charger and a Phoenix of Ash. Okay. We drew another land. Very good. So how do we play this? Alright, let's get it out now. Make some more scoots. We have an additional combat phase. So we can get in with those two. Yeah, you can block them. We have enough scoots. And then we get in with another scavenging ooze. So, we got rid of his board. What do you have in hand? We have nothing in hand, but this looks good. Getting rid of his board is real good. He makes his phoenix bigger. But if we draw land here, that's very good. Okay, he has a robber of the riches and we drew a land. So we will get in for a lot of damage. He needs to block the Morog. He absolutely needs to block the Morog. Oh yeah, got it to work. So, didn't help you. Oh, I should have played it. Oh no. So here's, here's the deal. Didn't get an additional combat phase because I was stupid. Because I was stupid. Is not a rubber of the riches, but we get a scavenging ooze. So that is pretty a okay. Still needs to block here. Still needs to block the Morog. Yep. And we will get a lot of life back. So, I made a little mistake here. Happens to the best. Happens to the best. So you guys can learn from my mistakes, which is pretty cool. So you don't have to make them yourselves. So scavenging ooze eats all of his graveyard. And we got a lot of life back. So if he doesn't have the Ember Cleave here, no he does not. 
he does not have it, he's still a good sport, the glowing oak foot, gets in for six, little too late, we did it, yep, Morag infinite attacks, there you go, new season, starting to rank, right now, so, surprising them with a gruel, we were aggressive enough, but just remember, always play the land in your second main phase. At least, that's what it looked like. So we're up against Solemn. Is this another red deck? Who knows? So today we're rocking these nice Liliana sleeves. I was thinking about buying them for a long time, but in the end, I got them for my Friday Night Magic. Okay, well, if we can draw one more land, we are good. If we can draw one more land for the Cultivate, that would be very nice. We're up against another Gruul deck. Let's see if we can draw land here to make our Bone Crusher Giant, uh, Brush Fire Elemental bigger, but we couldn't. Couldn't draw another land. Hmm. How are we playing this? I think we get the Fabled Passage out. The worst case, we at least have the Fervent Champion. So this time we have the Ashaya on hand. Let's see how it works out. Do you have your Brush Fire in hand? Do you have it? Yep, there it is. Okay. There's the brush for elemental, can't be blocked by the fervent champion. If we can draw another land, we are good. Yep, push the button, enemy. Push them buttons. Thank you very much. Are we cracking this? I think we should be cracking this. Or a green. Here's another fervent champion. So I will be extra cheeky because we didn't draw a land and I will just fight down this Brushfire Elemental. I mean, the first strike doesn't help us here, but we get rid of one of his biggest threats on the board. And if we can draw one more land, we're good. If we can draw one more land. Can we game? Did he miss a land drop? Nope, he didn't. Good thing we killed it, otherwise this would have been... A lot of damage. So next turn we get in with the Fervent Champion. And here's our third land. So, um... Maybe we are getting in with the Brushfire Elemental. Or are we... Nah, we are cultivating. We need to get our game plan running as soon as possible. We get a red on the field. And a green in hand. So next turn, we can put the Ashaya out, and it will be a 6-6. Six, six. Here's another innkeeper, so he has the Bone Crusher. But if he yep, he plays it out, draws two cards. But we will have our Ashaya out, and that's pretty freaking nice. Another land, pretty good. So, here's our Shia. We're chilling back a little bit. But the Brushfire Elemental and the Scoot Swarm will both trigger themselves. Mm-mm, I like that. I really like that. So, if he fights the Shia here, that would be kind of bad. But not the end of the world. Yeah, looks like he does. Looks like he does. No, he does not. He does not fight it. Here's a Love Struck Beast, so what is your last card? Okay, we have... Oh my gosh, he's drawing three cards. Yeah, where's my Bone Crusher Giant? Where is my own Bone Crusher Giant? Don't have it. But we will fill our board very good, very soon. So we get our Scoot Swarm out here. It will trigger itself. And we play... Um, I mean, yeah, we can play the Brushfire Elemental now. 
Try to attack in, get rid of one of his creatures. So we have a lot of creatures on the field right now. We have a lot of creatures on the field right now. And we get a Fervent Champion out. No reason not to play our whole hand. Yep, those triggers are insane. Those triggers are literally insane. So, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Playing it out now. I don't think so. I think I will get in with the Ashaya and the Brushfire Elemental. And I mean, I have 15 blockers on board. So I can block a lot of his stuff. Yeah, he, you need to block this. So he's getting rid of his small creature here. The worst part about Ashaya is that she doesn't have, or it doesn't have, um... Oh, you're not blocking here. Okay, cheeky, cheeky. That is indeed very cheeky. So let me count. I have 15 on board. So I can block all of his stuff. If he has the Amber Cleave. I can get rid of his Lovestruck Beast. So is my version of Gruul superior to yours? Gets in with those two, so he must have the Amber Cleave. Otherwise, why would he do that? So let me think. If we block, the Lovestruck Beast will become a 12. Yeah, I think we're good. I think we are good. Because we will block the Lovestruck Beast with one of our Scoot Swarms. Block the Bone Crusher Giant with one of our Scoot Swarms and block the Edward Innkeeper. And then we still have a lot on the board. So now it will cost him three. So there isn't much he can play. And the Kazanu Mammoth will give us so many Scoot Swarms. Oh man, why am I not playing this card more? Yeah, I know why. Because everyone is tired of seeing it. But I am not. It is the second deck I have it in. So, if we can find a Maroc here, mmm. So, first time out used. Opponent is thinking about his life choices, so it's a good time to drink a coffee. So, first game, Aggro Red, we got it. Second game, Gruel, looks pretty darn good. Looks pretty darn good. So our Brushfire Elemental will be not blockable. Okay, okay, so if I block this here, then it's still 11. Because why wouldn't he put it on there? But if he has two Bone Crusher Giants, so let's be a little bit more safe here. Just a little bit more safe. Okay, well, this looks pretty freaking good. This looks pretty freaking good. Looks like the opponent left the arena, but that is a win for us. And if he wouldn't have had the Emmer Cleave, we would have won anyways. So, let's wait it out. In the meantime, somebody told me that I look like a king. Did I already tell you that? So I've been getting a lot of comments. And I am very grateful for that, because each and every one commenting, I see it, I will respond to you. And I'm so glad, because I do this for fun and for the enjoyment of showing you my newest, freshest deck ideas. So if you found this channel um, on the internet, and now you're here, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Alright, so we get a lot of swarms. Oh yeah, but we will get even more. So yeah, we can use this one Scoot Swarm as a forest. No problem. 
No problem. I just want to make as many as I can. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Didn't even need the Maroc. So we get in with those eight. Need to click them all. Is there anything that we don't get in with? Nah. Nah, we get in with everything. And there's our second win. For free. Thank you, Solemn. Thank you for, um... Fixing yourself a sandwich? I don't know. 2-0, baby. 2-0. So, there you've seen it. The power of the Ashaya. If we couldn't have gotten out, a Maroc would have been even freaking sweeter. We go first. We have the Ashaya out. So, I think we will do this. We absolutely do this. Let's get our Fervent Champion on the field. Get in for some damage. We can't play the Mammoth next turn anyway. So, is this a Croxa deck? Croxa of Titan's Hunger. We shall see. Okay. Bone Crusher Giant, real nice. Can get rid of one of his creatures. Are we cracking the Fabled Passage yet? I don't know. <gasps> what is this craziness? Oh, it's a food deck. Okay, we need to be quick here. Otherwise, the food will get us. Do you have a shock? You have a Blood Chief Thirst. Okay, we need a green. And we will sure as hell get it. Get down there, forest. Another Kazandu Mammoth. That is okay for me. So we keep our Bone Crusher back here. So it looks like this is a food deck. So we need to be real quick. Get in for two here. Smash his face. The Cultivate, eh? That is very good. Are we using it now? I think we are. Getting us uh, two rats. Putting one on the field. And then we get the Ashaya out. Hopefully he won't kill it. Hopefully he uh, won't just kill the Ashaya. But with the Scoots warm up next, looks pretty tasty. Also, maybe I put the Scoot Swarm out. Yeah. Make as many swarms as soon as possible. With the Fabled Passage, that is absolutely fine. Why did you tap it like that? We will never find out. But I can get a Bone Crusher Giant on the field. Get another green here. Get four of those bad boys. And get the Bone Crusher out. And next turn, I will get the Ashaya out and make eight Scoot Swarms. Okay, hopefully it doesn't have the Blazing Volley or something crazy like that. But what are you playing? Opponent didn't play too much before now. So that is fine. Yeah, no matter what you kill here. Okay, you take one of my Scoot Swarms, but you already played a land. Should have done it differently. You played the Fabled Passage. Yeah, you can have that one damage. I think you should have done it differently. But who am I to judge? Who am I to judge? I've making mistakes. So he draws two here. Not a problem. If you don't get anything on a board, even less of a problem. That guy can't block at all. So we get the Ashaya out. Mm-mm. We'll be big and strong. Make us some Scoot Swarms. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, and he surrenders. He knew what was coming for him. There we go. 3-0, baby. 3-0 with this Ashaya Fury of Ashaya deck. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, my good old fiddle bib. We did it, boy. We did it. So can anyone even stand in the way of the Fury of Ashaya? I don't think so. We're 3-0 already? 3-0? Yeah, I'm showing it like this. I could do it like this or like this. Whatever you prefer. Tell me in the comments. How do you show the number 3? 
So, we're up against Vilhena with the Yorian deck. Okay. This looks not too shabby. This looks okay. But the opponent goes first, so that is bad for us. Opponent going first is always bad. So is this a Doom Foretold deck? We get another forest. I would prefer another mountain here. Get the forest over here. Gets his birth of Miletus. So the Scoot Swarm doesn't look too good here. But we get the Fervent Champion out first and if he kills it, we can eat it with the Scavenging Ooze. Okay, we get another Fervent Champion. That is actually not too bad. So we get it out now, still looking for that... Um... So, are we Primal Miting this already? So he can't block. No, I don't think so. I really don't think so. Primal Might can be a game changer later. Getting in here for two free damage is still okay. You will get it back with the birth. But that is fine with me. Here's the Omen of the Sea. Also, we need to Primal Might for his uh, Yorian up here. Good old Sky Nomad. This art is pretty nice. If you haven't done it already, you should check it out. Here's a glass casket. Not what I want to see. Still better than nothing. And here is a fabled passage. So how cheeky are we? I mean, if he wipes the board... Hmm. So I at least get an insect out of this. It's still nice. Cracking the Fable Passage here. Getting an insect. It's not an exact copy, but it is okay. We need a rat. As soon as possible. So we make another insect token. No need to attack in. And if he has a board wipe here. <gasps> the Elspeth conquers death. Oh my. Okay. That is not a board wipe. That is not a board wipe. But we drew another land. So our Akum doesn't look too bad here. And now we can get rid of the wall. Yeah, we need to do it like this. Or do we? I mean, we need to be a little bit faster here. Get in for some damage. Okay. We have no creatures in our graveyard. He doesn't have any creatures in, our gra in his graveyard. So the scavenging ooze doesn't look too good here. Here is another Yorian. What are you taking care of? Getting one of the tokens under it. So it looks like he has another flicker effect. Otherwise, why would he have done that? So next turn we can play our Morog. This costs two now, so what is the best we can do here? The best we can do is three. So we get in with the two Fervent Champions. He will block one of them. And uh, then we get rid of his um, Yorian here. I mean, all of our stuff will be dead. But we can feed our ooze that way, which is pretty good. Feed the ooze, get rid of his Yorian in the graveyard. The Omen of the Sea. Eat some of our stuff. The Solemn Simulacrum. So he will draw land here, but we will get the ooze out. Eat his Yorian. Yep. That's a nice snack. 
And we will eat some of our own stuff here, like one of the Fervent Champions. That is another nice snack. So next turn we will get the Morog out. No need to attack in here. You get nothing for your uh, Elspeth Conqueror's death. A Skyclave Apparition. Okay. Okay, opponent. You got some all. All the removals. And another Yorian. Of course. So, 80 card deck, all of the Yorians in his first 19 cards. Well, he has a lot of scry, he has a lot of draw, so it's not really surprising. It is not so surprising. But if we can get something good here, we're still a-okay. Amarok needs to get on the field here. We get the brush fire elemental. Yeah, you can get in next turn. So hopefully he doesn't have another Elspeth Conquer's death. And if he does, well, three one is still a pretty good, uh, pretty good win rate. Oh, this doesn't look good. This does not look good. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope uh, you weren't wearing headphones. And if you were, this must have been loud. Okay. And Tessa. Of course. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you have the Tessa? There's no way for me to get rid of the Tessa. Oh boy, he draws a lot. So this flicker deck is literally insane. So we get in with our Morog. We drew another Morog. She taps the Morog. So we don't get in with another Morog, but uh, with the Brushfire Elemental. No need to put it on the field. He will just uh, have his glass casket ready for it. Yeah, this game looks pretty over. If there's not a miracle happening here, this game looks pretty over. So the Yorian will get flickered once more, infinite flickers. So if you have seen my, um, who and why is Matches Malone? Yeah, this deck. This deck. Pretty freaking good. Bay of Wishes, even. Okay, wasn't in my uh, CGB, um, CGB style video I did, okay. So here's the Sublime Epiphany. Yeah, we're pretty boned. If we can draw a miracle here, we are indeed pretty freaking boned. Flickers everything once more. This Tessa is ready for action. So we get a Scoot Swarm here, but he will get in with the Yorian. Let's give him the good game. It was well played by our opponent. I'm sorry, Philbib. I let you down. I let you down. All right, we had three pretty convincing wins, and then we got up against a Yorian deck, which was very flicker heavy. So what are we up against next? No companion, otherwise uh, the Eaterhub app would have shown me already. Oh, okay, we're up against another Yorian deck. But this time we have the Great Hange. Hmm. Yeah, let's freaking try this. I mean, what else are we supposed to do? We got a Shutter Skull smashing out first. But with the Mammoth, we can get the Great Hange out as soon as possible. We can get it out as soon as possible. He's blue, the Maze Mind Tome, okay. So we get our pathway, we have all the colors we need. He doesn't have two white for his Skyclave Apparition to take care of the Mammoth. But with this, the Great Hange is at 6 already, and it will be at 4. Where... Okay, he has the Glass Casket. Well, too bad. Too freaking bad. But we have another Mammoth. 
Let's put it out there. And the mountain. Always play your mountains first. You never know if they have the Javari disruption. Ooh, pretty cat. Pretty cat. So do you have the apparition now? No, you don't. So will I be trying to get in for the Great Henge? I think I should. I think I should get in with the Great Henge. Ooh, very nice. So we can get the Scoot Swarm out now. Draw a card. And uh, even if he has the board wipe, he has the Into the Royal. Well, that's just not too good for us. But one into the royal is better than a board wipe. Oh, I hope he doesn't have the board wipe. Our mammoth is still pretty big. And uh, our maroc will be coming out soon. So can we draw a land here, game? Can we get a land? Forsaken monument. Oh, okay. Not a land. Not a land. So we get in for a four here. We get our Bone Crusher Giant on the field so we can play the Great Hand next turn. And maybe, maybe, if the game likes us, we even draw a land. Maybe we even draw a land, which would be so nice. So here's the Crawling Barons out. So, a Solemn Simulacrum. He gets two life. I'm not worried about that. Because with the Maroc, can be freaking sweet. Do you even play board wipes? We will find out soon. But you sure as hell play Ugin. But the Great Henge is good against Ugin. This is a Skyclave Relic and the Birth of Miletis. Okay. But if we can draw a land here. And even if we can't, we draw another Mirog. Okay. Okay. Not exactly what I want to see. Should we get in here, let him draw a card? I mean, it would free the board. And we're looking still pretty A-OK. -okay. And if we can get a land now... We are looking pretty good. If we can find a land here, come on game. Two Marocs in hand, not really what I need. If he has the Yorian here, well, not much we can do about that. The Yorian, I mean the Ugin. The Ugin, of course. Are you playing your Ugin? Are you playing... He has a Yorian. Okay. Yorian's not too bad. If we can draw another land. Or even our Ashaya. So, two Yorian decks in a row. Game is good. Game is good. So, this is four. Oh no, this is three. Oh, darn it. Oh, darn it. So, he will take care of the Scoot Swarm. But we have our Mammoth and draw a card, so that is pretty nice. And we got a land. And we have another Scoot Swarm in hand. He gets another Yorian in hand. Okay. We will get to life. Let's see what we can get here. Scoot Swarm should be the least of your worries with what I have in hand here. Mm -mm -mm. So it is my turn. And another Marog. Okay, game. Okay, game. Give me all the Marogs. Give me all of them. So we draw a card here. The scavenging ooze is nice. It is pretty nice. So we need to push our mammoth here. Get in for a lot of damage. He draws a card. Is it a little too late? Is it a little too late? 
So, our mammoths are looking pretty strong here. We get in with both of them. He surrenders! We got him! He knew it was over! Alright! Alright! Four wins to one. Very good. Did I promise you too much? Aren't you entertained? You thought Scoot Swarm with Mutate was good? Oh, Scoot Swarm with Morag. Freaking good. Scoot Swarm with the Ashaya. Even better. Nobody expects those cards in the meta. And as you have seen, four wins, one. Well, Yorian defeat. It was okay. We beat another Yorian immediately afterwards. It felt pretty good. It felt pretty good. With this deck, you will have a lot of fun. You will have a good chance of ranking. We didn't encounter rogues. Not too sad about it. I am really not too sad about it. But yeah, we had a lot of fun. Mammoth, always nice. The brush for elemental, did his work. It was just amazing. Oh man, this is a fun gruel deck. Absolutely try it out. If you have some wild cards to spare for the Morag and the Ashaya, or you maybe even have them, just try it out. Don't forget to use your Bob Ross art code in the store. Yep, it was delightful meta. We'll put it up here again. If you made it this far, you obviously like what I'm doing. And if you're new to the channel, I would love it if you would give me one of those beautiful subscriptions, trying to reach my milestone of 200. Who knows, maybe by the end of the week, we will have done it all together. And if we don't, well, I will be here for the next 100 years. So don't worry, eventually we will become bigger and bigger like our scavenging ooze. So, this was MTG Malone, I'm Matches Malone and I will see you all tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.